the war in Ukraine as U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin have promised Ukraine $322 million in military aid after meeting President Volodymyr Zelensky in Kiev. They also say U.S. diplomats will start returning to the western city of Lviv in the coming week. Moscow's ambassador to Washington says Russia is warning that large Western deliveries of weapons were inflaming the conflict and would lead to more losses. Local authorities in Ukraine reveal several locations in central and Western Ukraine have been hit by Russian shelling, including five railway stations and two towns in Vinitsha region. After a secrecy shrouded visit to Kiev, the U.S. Secretary of State says that Russia is failing in its war aims in Ukraine. The visit comes as the war in Ukraine enters its third month, with no end in sight. Thousands of people dead, millions having become refugees, and cities reduced to rubbles. But that's in stark uh, contrast to what's going on in other parts of Ukraine in the south and the east, where the Russian brutality uh, is doing horrific things to people uh, every single day. In terms of uh, wars won and lost, again, I come back to the proposition that uh, in terms of Russia's war aims, Russia has already failed and Ukraine has already succeeded because the principal aim that President Putin brought to this, in his own words, was to fully subsume Ukraine back into Russia, to take away its sovereignty and independence. And that has not happened and clearly will not happen. Where the, the contours of the war goes from here, how much death and destruction continues, obviously that's a deep concern. Uh, we want to do everything we can to help the Ukrainians bring this to an end on the best possible terms as quickly as possible. Much of the work that we're doing is enabling them to strengthen their hand both on the battlefield right now, but also eventually at a negotiation if there is one. After his Kiev visit, U.S. Defense Chief says Ukraine can win against Russia with the right equipment, and he pledges the U.S. support in every way possible. While he's grateful for all the things that we're doing, uh, he's also focused on uh, what he thinks he'll need next in order to be successful. And again, uh, they have the mindset that they want to win. We have the mindset that we want to help them win, and we are going to do that. Now, in terms of uh, specific types of things that we were able to discuss and, 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 and kind of lay out. You know, we reminded them that uh, Thursday, the pre President Biden signed a, uh, you know, a drawdown, and uh, on Saturday, uh, Howard's was, were showing up from that drawdown package. That is uh, unimaginable speed, uh, and uh, it's due to the hard work of all the men and women who are working day out, uh, day in and day out to, uh, to do the kinds of things that uh, they're doing. In a statement from his office, Ukraine's president says the $3.4 billion in military assistance from the U.S. is already helping bring Ukraine's defense capabilities to a qualitatively new level. The statement noted that the president's discussions with the U.S. delegation included current priorities for the belligerent state, strengthening sanctions on Russia, financial support for Ukraine, and security guarantees. Elsewhere, a German defense company has requested approval to export 100 old mother infantry fighting vehicles to Ukraine. A defense source told journalists on Monday. Confirming an earlier report, a defense source told newsmen on Monday that elsewhere in Germany, a company has requested approval to export 100 old mother infantry fighting vehicles to Ukraine. The source says the company is seeking an export license from the vehicles in their current state for now, aiming to restore them over the coming months before shipping them to Ukraine. The deal will have to be approved by Germany's National Security Council, a committee chaired by Chancellor Olaf Scholz that meets in secret session. Despite the ceaseless tension created by the ongoing war, Russia's President Vladimir Putin on Sunday attended an Easter Mass conducted by the Russian Orthodox Church, which has strongly backed the Kremlin's leader's special military operation in Ukraine. Mr. Putin stood to one side in Moscow's Christ the Savior Cathedral holding a lit red candle. Live images of the midnight service showed. 
The Russian leader crossed himself several times during the ceremony. When Patrick Kirill announced Christ has risen, Putin joined other members of the congregation with a reply, truly he's risen. He otherwise did not speak.